So I've been making videos for YouTube for some 10 years now and I also have been taking lots of photos for you know my private needs and also product photos to sell them on uh, Amazon or eBay and I've always struggled with uh, with light it's always been a challenge but I think I found a brilliant solution like one stop shop you know and this is it so I'm going to review it very quickly so first of all I want to tell you why I think it's brilliant what I like about it and then there will be a detailed review and I'm going even to tell you the things that are not so great about it but mostly it's brilliant for everything so by the way the brand name is I VC, that's how I believe it should be pronounced and the name is simply ring light with wireless remote control and it's an upgraded version from July 2019 uh, just released so if you want to make sure that you get the latest version uh, simply follow the link in the description so you will get the right one not the previous model I really like the way it's designed it's got this nice monitor here it has this remote control with a very uh, large and clear monitor as well here. So um, uh, the light uh, can be powered by mains, can be powered by batteries. Uh, it's got, uh, it can work with uh, five, in five groups with other devices, with other compatible lights uh, that are compatible with that standard of wireless communication. Uh, all these could be used as presets. Uh, it's really well made, uh, it's got USB uh, charging port, quick charging port, so you can power your camera or your phone if, if, if it's here. It's got three slots uh, for various things, so your camera, your microphone or whatever else. It comes with uh, great accessories, so um, various adapters uh, that uh, have this uh, shoe mount standard so they can slide in here or wherever else because these are standard things uh, there is a, a double one there is a single one as well and um, it comes with uh, also with so UK and European cable uh, it comes with uh, <laughs> some kind of a strap, small strap as well uh, it comes with a phone holder it uh, can hold a really large phone even you know I don't know six and a half inches or something like this it comes with a um, tablet holder comes with a physical uh, remote shutter release for both Android and iOS phones if you want to uh, use it with your phone uh, it comes with diffuser so right now there is a white diffuser that by the way the power is set only to 1% it comes also with a green red and blue uh, filters or diffusers as if you want to call them so it's really good who is it good for? As I said, for people who are looking for one solution to their photos or video needs. Well, you might need a second light. For example, I have a small light there, which is like this size, and it's fairly cheap, maybe 30 pounds or something like this, maybe cheaper now, and I've been very happy with it. And with this one, this one is brilliant. So I, I don't think I will replace that one for the time being, but I put products, uh, videos and photos, it's brilliant. Or if I need more power, this one is really powerful. I'll, I'll do a short um, brightness test in a moment. It's quite powerful if I need uh, light when I'm further away from the camera uh, or for whatever reason I need more light, this one will be, you know, brilliant. So enjoy the rest of the review. Uh, it's going to be long and detailed. I hope you will enjoy it. Big thanks, guys. Take care. So this is the brightness test. The camera is set to manual. Everything's manual, so it's not going to auto adjust. Uh, ISO 100 f20 uh, 35 millimeters lens so this is one percent now uh, and the diffuser is on which makes the light obviously a little bit less intensive so let's go to 20, uh, 25 percent so i would say that light is kind of adequate if i don't want to have a video that's too bright and this is adequate 50 percent i think this is uh, perfect this is a little bit blinding and 100 now it's really blinding uh, making it, it's uncomfortable now to look at it yeah so that shows you <laughs> what uh, is possible with this light now let's go to zero as you can see it's almost total darkness in this room there is a bit of a light from the monitor uh, I have a big screen here but you can't see it you know you, you could only see that blue blue light from um, from this this little thing um, so let's see what it will look like with four, f4.5, okay? Okay, same test, but now the lens is set to 4.5, f4.5, so 1%, 25%, too dark, 50%, uh, that's uh, better, but not yet 75%, kind of, 
100% that would be maybe adequate now remember that my camera is set to ISO 100 so I can still increase ISO to 4, to 4 or even 800 easily I can also change the shutter speed from 190 to 160 for 130 if I need to so there is still um, scope for increasing uh, the brightness uh, in the video so the light is perfect it's it's absolutely not too weak it's absolutely brilliant if brightness is concerned so now i'm going to do a detailed review of the this whole uh, ring light enjoy it so i have this ring light by uh, ivi s II company. Uh, it's another iteration of uh, that light, the latest one. At the moment it retails for £160 on Amazon and uh, I'm going to tell you what is great about it. I'm not gonna go into any details, you can check the specs online, but I might mention a few. So it's a fairly okay looking box, standard box, but yeah it's good enough. Uh, and it's got some instruction about the uh, light stand in the box, which is curiously interesting and there's a handle. So let's see what's inside. Okay, so it's all packed in, in a bag like this. Uh, yeah, very cool bag, I think if you want to carry. Uh, it's got two handles and uh, small handles and one a strap if you want to carry it on, on, your, on the shoulder yeah good enough it's quite light it's not very heavy so I think it's fairly portable uh, if you're not planning to walk with it one hour you, sh you should be all right so let's look for the light stand yes ring light stand yeah it's another box at the bottom hooray hooray okay we've got the light stand okay so ring light stand yeah very Useful information, okay, cool. Okay, so it seems like a really nice, good quality uh, stand. It's kind of fairly standard, similar to others that I have, but this one seems to be a bit uh, better. So the the, the middle uh, pipe is, is uh, much thicker. Um, let's see these things, how they work. Yeah. I'm quite pleased with it, yeah, it works really well. Yeah, good quality, okay. Let's check the bag. First, I'm not necessarily very impressed, but let's see. So um, this uh, comes detached, so maybe that's all right, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, does, it looks like everything's okay with it. Then. Uh, We'll have a look here in a moment and here as well. So we've got uh, four of these to cover the whole ring. And this is it, yeah? Okie dokie. So let's look at the, uh, at the bigger box first. But, right, these are different colors. So we've got uh, orange, blue and green. I'm, I'm going to unpack it later on. And then the box with the most important goodies. Let's have a look. Okay, so uh, we have a power supplier. Uh, so that looks, uh, can camera show it? Uh, it's so it's a standard plug power supplier uh, with a small uh, connector. Uh, so you can use any cable you like. This is fairly common. Now we have a UK uh, plug that goes into that, I'm guessing, yeah, yeah. And we've got and also we have the Euro European version as well. So both of them can be useful in many situations, so it's good. The cables quality, yeah, I'm quite pleased with them, yeah. They, they don't feel cheap, they're just like good solid cables. Then we have, well, this is all packed in, in various uh, plastic bags. Okay, so there are two holders. Actually, no, sorry, it's one holder. Okay, that's very clever for a mobile phone or something and this is expendable okay with a screw so there is no uh, spring and uh, there is a screw here okay very good uh, then we have the attachment for the oh this is very clever very useful so you can actually slide it into the camera if you've got the um, hot shoe uh, mount you can slide it in uh, that's useful and then uh, screw whatever you want on it then we have uh, another one 
What's the difference? Yeah, it's uh, okay. It's very similar, but this thing is now regulated. So um, it just goes straight up and down, whereas this one uh, is is with the ball, so you can actually move it around. Uh, so both quite useful actually, depending on the situation you have, they can both be quite useful. Um, then we have another attachment, very useful. Uh, so similar to the other ones, but a little bit smaller. So you've got, um, again, hot shoe mount with two uh, of those things to regulate it, whatever you call them. Uh, strap, yeah, that's useful, maybe. <laughs> And then we have uh, something that actually says universal adjustable mount for table, tablet, sorry, and smartphone, and it's a user guide. Okay, yes. Oh, this one is with actually um, with a spring. So that is good. Okay, lovely. And then I can see it's got kind of standard mounts um, for the battery or to fit it uh, in some other kind of holders. Yeah, that's fairly standard. I hope you, are, you know it if you're looking for this type of product. Uh, then we have this tiny remote control. Wow, that is super cool. So it's something <laughs> like this. So it's a... Um, no, Android. Okay, ah, Android. Sorry, yeah, it just looks funny. Okay, so it's a remote control. And then the last bit is this uh, fancy white box. Oh, this is lovely. Actually, this is, a pro this is the proper remote control. Uh, it feels good in the hand. Um, yeah, it's got a protective uh, strip to uh, secure the battery so it doesn't discharge in transport. So I'm going to remove it soon and we'll, we'll be testing it. But it feels really, really good actually in the hand. It feels really good in the hand. Okay, we get uh, some instructions, simple instruction manual. Uh, we've got a feedback form and some uh, simple manual for the light stand. I think I'm, I'm quite pleased with the, the first experience, so I'm going to connect it and test it and then uh, I'll tell you more about it. Right, so this light can be mounted like this or uh, like this on the side. So uh, simply put it in and just let it hang. It's not obviously very safe and secure. There is no way of securing it. I tried, uh, but the thread here, it's unfortunately, uh, this one is different to the standard one, so it doesn't uh, fit. Uh, there may be some adapters that will allow you, so uh, you could try, but obviously the standard way of mounting is securing it like this and then using a side screw uh, to actually secure it. Okay, once it is secured, um, it feels like yeah, it is a bit wobbly, uh, a little bit, but it's safe, it's safe and stable. Now, the good thing is, um, you, you can use the side screw, the other side screw, to actually regulate the tilt and it can tilt forwards and backwards quite a lot. So as you can see, it's more than 180 degrees, it's more like 20, sorry, 200, 220 uh, degrees of uh, tilt range. So that is really good. And at the back of the, the light, there is a display, power switch, batteries, and power supplier, uh, place for two batteries. Quick charger, three zero USB. So if you uh, if you connect uh, either, I think it works with both batteries and the power supply. If you connect it here, then this port can be used to charge your phone or any other device. Pretty cool, yeah. It might be useful. Uh, let's get down to testing it. Actually, how it works. So I really like this light, and uh, let me show you a few functions. So remote control is brilliant. So if I uh, long press it, it switches itself off. Uh, if I sh long press it again, it switches on again. And now it says all off. Uh, so I'm gonna press short press now the, the power button. This switches on. So now this is set now only to 1%. And um, my camera uh, has got a very fast lens now, so it looks like really bright. It's not very bright, it's bright enough to have some uh, photos, videos in the darkness, so to say, uh, but uh, during the day on normal video recording, 1% is really little, so it only looks in this video like very bright. And so there are uh, there are five rows of diodes, white ones, three of white ones, and two of uh, yellow ones. And when you change the color temperature, the white balance, 
uh, they kind of uh, change their intensity. Okay, so uh, let's see how it works. So now it's set to 4400 uh, Kelvin, same as my light here. It's a small light, um, so it looks very bright, but as I said, it's because my camera has got a fast lens now, uh, so it looks bright. Uh, but it's like not very bright, it's like bright enough. Uh, okay, so let's go. So what I like about this is I can now uh, change uh, the percentage of the power just by uh, rotating the wheel here. So it, it goes by one, but if I turn, turn it quickly, it will go like crazy, you can see. So this is zero and this is one percent, yeah? Uh, okay, second thing that I like, obviously I can change the color here, so I can just uh, press the middle button and now I can control the color. So I can go to the lowest, which is 3000, and now we only have yellow uh, LEDs. And then I go one step higher. Uh, sorry, that's power. Let me go, I need to press the button again. Now this is annoying that it um, just switches back to power after a few seconds, uh, four seconds roughly. So I would like it to stay in that mode for 10 seconds or, or at least until I press the button, something like this. So light, uh, sorry, the, um, the white balance. And as you can see, immediately white uh, lights come on. And the, the, that's a big jump actually between 3000 and 3100. And then it's uh, fairly uh, gradual. Okay, power again, sorry. Then it's uh, fairly gradual. It changes its uh, color nicely until uh, 5800. But there is one issue with that. It's, um, it goes maximum to 5800. And um, the issue is that sometimes the, the the remote control can go up to 8000 and that's a problem because if I go fast it will again that annoying thing uh, it will go be up to 8000 and it will s the light here this one will show me 5700 instead of maximum 5800 sometimes 5600 and I, if I want 5800 I need to go go back down down, down, back to at least 58, and it's only then when it will switch to 58, which is a bit annoying. So that, that's a bit of a bug, I think, uh, or design issue. Okay, so um, these are the bugs, but how about the things that I like? So I like the fact that it uh, can control, there are five groups, so it can control other, sorry, six groups from A to F, um, other kind of groups of light. So you can have masters and slaves and you can have six of those groups as far as I understand, or you can use this as preset. But when you use it as preset, you can't change between presets on the remote control because if you change it on the remote control, uh, this is now uh, supposed, this is supposed to control some other lights and not this one. So you need to do it manually, uh, but it works great. If you can do it manually from here, you see, I can um, quickly change uh, easily presets uh, and back to my original one, yeah? Um, so again, funny thing, this one has got five groups and the remote control is for six groups. Uh, so f or five presets here and there are six groups. So again, the remote control is more universal, not specifically to this device, which is which could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending uh, what you want. I, I think I would prefer a, a remote control designed only specifically for what I have. But again, it's a minor thing. I can get used to it. It just, I find it annoying the thing with the, with the power and color uh, that it uh, switches from the color back to power, you know, automatically within a few seconds. Very, very annoying, yeah? Okay, another thing that I like about it is the a quick uh, power cycle button. It cycles f uh, between, it just goes up all the time, 200% and back to zero. So from zero it goes to one. So now it's one, I'm, pr I'm gonna press again, 25, 50, 75, 100, and zero. And then one again. So I think it's brilliant, you know, for quickly ro uh, cycling through the power uh, settings. So that's very good. What else is there? We can change channels. There are 48 channels, so um, uh, to avoid interferences with various devices. And I think this is brilliant. So that's what I like about uh, the light itself. Let's do some tests now with uh, this camera and with my mobile phone as well. 
So mobile phone uh, holder, it's it's pretty good as well. So um, it's big, it can fit uh, quite a big device. So my uh, Mate 20 Pro is fairly large phone and it fits uh, here easily. And there is still like, I don't know, an inch of space. So maybe even a seven inch tablet would fit in, maybe not, but six and a half inch for, for sure. So let's test it on the, uh, on the light itself. Okay, so let's test the whole thing with my mobile phone. I'm gonna use a uh, selfie camera so I can see what's going on on the screen. Uh, and in the meantime, also I'll be looking at this camera as well. Now this device, uh, the whole set, I mean, the, the ring light comes with a nice uh, control, remote control for mobile phones. And I uh, supposedly it works both with Android and I iOS. It works great with my uh, Mate 20 Pro. It's an Android phone, of course. Uh, it's got a physical power switch, which I, think, which I think is brilliant. It just slides up and down and it's recognized as a physical keyboard. The top button works as volume and the bottom button, I think, as enter or something like this. Okay, so uh, let me switch off all the other lights. Okay, so uh, now we only have this ring light uh, shining at me. There is a bit of tiny light from the window, but really little because I covered it, uh, so uh, it's insignificant. Actually, I'll show you if I switch this whole thing off. You know, you can still see me. Ah, it's from the from the here from the monitor. You can still see me. Um, but it's pretty dark. I wouldn't shoot a video in this type of con conditions, you know, so this is the light on with 1% on. Uh, both cameras are kind of set to automatic. Um, what I like, I'm looking at the preview on the big camera and it actually qu looks quite good, you know, in, in this darkness. Yeah, it's a fast lens, but it looks quite good. Okay. Um, let me jump to I'm gonna just increase it to 2%, 5, ten, let's go to 15, now I'm gonna jump to 25, okay, this is pretty bright, I think it's bright enough for uh, any kind of a video and, and it will be of good quality. Uh, my proper camera is even thinking that it's a bit too strong of a light. Okay, so I'm going to go a bit further back. Yeah, that looks like much better. Okay, now I'm gonna switch to 50. So this is becoming now really bright. I think, yeah, for video, this is brilliant. I mean, if, it, if I go any brighter, if I go closer, this is too bright for my eyes. Um, this distance, I think it's really good, but just for the test, I'll go to 75 and 100. Wow, that's really bright. Okay, so I'm looking now. That is really good for photos. I'm going to test it for product photos and other things, you know. So, brightness, spot on. Zero, again zero, and one percent. Test passed. <laughs> so this light comes also with uh, diffusers, so uh, white ones and, and two other colors. So let's quickly see what difference they make. Okay, so let's test it now. Uh, I'm gonna switch off the other lights. 20%. 25. Okay, actually, I think I need to move it back to where it was before so you can actually see me. I'm going to remove that mobile phone. <laughs> I think this is very good. 25, 50. Ooh, too bright, too bright. No, but I, I can handle it. Okay, the diffuser definitely makes it a little bit darker, obviously, but just a little bit. 75. Yeah, this. Yeah, this is now a little bit too bright. I think 50 was perfect and 100. 100, I could do 100 if I just look straight at the lens, but if I look at the light, oh, it's it's too, definitely too bright. Yeah, and I think my camera also agrees that it's too bright. So this is my camera with 0%, very little daylight going through the window, very little. 1%, uh, as you can see, even at 1%, the daylight is overpowered by this light. Uh, and 25%, um, it's really good. 
color uh, reproduction. Okay, I'm gonna go for 50% because I think 50% is perfect uh, power for the distance I'm from the light. Uh, okay, so um, the colors look good. The colors definitely look good. I don't see. Uh, yeah, I think the color reproduction is really good. I don't have any devices. Uh, or any other technology to test the CRI index bar, as far as I can see, it's pretty good. Okay, the light is roughly two meters away from me, uh, more or less where the camera is, but it's a little bit higher. So uh, I'm pretty pleased with the light actually. I think it's very uniform, uh, no shadows anywhere as far as I can see. Okay, let's go for, this is 50%, let's go to 75. Okay, and the camera adjusted quite well. So yeah, of course there is some shadow behind me, but it's not not very harsh. Uh, it's not disturbing, I would say. I think it's really good. And 100. Yeah, at 100 percent, I think from two meters away, I think it's perfect lighting for for a video. Uh, I would be very pleased with it. As far as I can see, my face is well lit. Now, mind you, the light is a bit high. It's not around the camera. Okay, let me see if I can put it actually around the camera. Maybe I'll, I'll manage. Okay, the light is roughly uh, in the center of the lens. So the lens is here, but should, this is the center. Uh, so it's roughly as it should be mounted. I just uh, I have a different setup so I couldn't really mount it so quickly. But anyway, it's good enough. Uh, the light is only some 30 centimeters away from the camera, so it doesn't matter. Uh, that obviously is decided by the focal length of the lens uh, we have. But I'm around two meters away from the light and it's 25%. Uh, it's good. So let me increase it to 50% and now 75%. Okay, this is good for this lens, and then 100%. Okay, I think the brightness is really good. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the settings uh, of, the, of the camera from uh, 20 f to 0 to f 4.5, let's say. Okay, so I switched from 2.0 to f4.5. Uh, that's because many people will have this type of this type of an aperture available in their lenses. Uh, so I think it's still pretty good. Uh, we will decide. I, I'll check later on how about the noise, but you can decide yourself. That I think it's a very, very effective light. I'm gonna switch on my top light. It uh, doesn't make too much of a difference really, even though it's quite bright. I'm gonna switch another strong light here. Okay, now I have an extra fairly strong light there and I think the kind of the light output is similar, but this one actually is stronger and it still I have the diffuser on it and it's I think it's quite much stronger than this light. So really good and Now let me let me switch on my other lights that I normally use, so the white light and the yellow light. Barely visible, they make no difference whatsoever. Okay, let's see if I can close now. I often sit here when I shoot videos. I really need to decrease the power. So this is normally how I shoot with uh, just a small light here. And now I'm gonna switch this one, 1%. That was a little bit different. 25 and I think that's already too strong that's definitely too strong now so let me switch off my uh, previous light okay so this is what you can expect from this light just round light on my face very close to my face and then I'm gonna switch off the top light as well so now only the ring light is, is uh, shining on me so to say uh, so you can see the quality of it colors um, maybe it's I think it's actually too bright too bright I need to darken it to some reasonable levels something like this so this is 12% this is 12% and I think this is the level where I uh, I think is decent it's not too bright now I'm uh, now here a little bit further back then I can turn it to 20 maybe 
20, yes, then I'll go back. Let's go to 25 more, maybe. Uh, 45, let's say 50 possibly, so 50% and I'm quite happy if I go any, anywhere that further, I think maybe 75, so if I switch it to 100, that's what I'm getting, uh, and so it's 4.5, F4.5 now. So here we are, now let's uh, test some uh, other colors. So here we go, F20 and now red light 1%, okay, so this is with the red uh, filter on top of uh, the light, so this is the white one and the red is on, so let's go ooh, up to 15% now, 25, wow. Uh, Okay, my camera is showing the colors roughly, yeah, that's fairly correctly, you know, it's not maybe as spooky as in the video, but it's roughly like that, 50%, 50%, Now my skin looks a little bit better in reality, so my camera is not really showing it well, uh, but the skin looks uh, fairly normal, fairly normal, so I'm going to go back, 75%, um, 100% okay it's not very bright but it's not supposed to be bright it's um, it's just red light you know so that's what it look that's what it looks like it's fairly I mean in reality it looks fairly natural fairly nice it's a very pleasing light uh, slightly reddish uh, as you can see in the video but in the video it looks like it's not that great there is something not right with the way my camera um, is processing the colors because here uh, it, it looks much better okay so here's the green filter 25 percent now i also have uh, red and uh, blue and remember you can mix and match them to get various uh, effects uh, Again, quality of light, let's have a look. I'm going to increase to 50%, 75%, 100%. Okay, I think everything looks really nice. Uh, how is it in the camera? I cannot really see now, but I think it's, it looks better now than with the red light. So obviously that's a challenge with my camera. It can be adjusted, but the green one, light, I think I like it. And if we mix it with other colors, I'm sure it's going to be uh, brilliant so let's do the blue light shall we okay so here's the blue light the blue filter uh, just a moment ago we had the green one 25% uh, 50% 75% and 100% okay let's go back uh, yeah I think all looks nice and blue uh, it's not very very blue actually it's a very delicate blue so it's more like a bluish color uh, roughly the way you see in the video it's a bluish kind of color but it's more like white very cold white I would say uh, so it's like maybe temperature of you know 6500 kelvins you know but with a little bit of a blue tint just a little bit so yeah very good what's not to like about it Okay, so 100% now I mixed blue and uh, red. I used two, two red ones and two blue ones on the light, uh, out of four possible. I think it's a good mixture and looks very interesting, especially where the shadows are. So we have kind of a double uh, shadows of two colors. Uh, so that's an interesting effect. Uh, we could also use, I don't know, uh, white and uh, green maybe as well. Let's replace one red with a green maybe. Let's see. Okay, so it's white and green now. Okay, so now there is one red, one green, two blue. Uh, yeah, interesting combination. The shadow is very interesting. Hopefully you can see. Uh, it's three colors. Uh, you know, you can't probably see, but it's really cool. Yeah, the shadow is really cool. I, so I really like this light. Let's test it now for 
photos. Let's see what, what photos look like with this uh, light. So this is my setup for shooting uh, product photos and videos. We will start first with a colored object, so a bottle of Soplica, a very popular Polish vodka. So the light is above, it's set to 100% power and 5500 kelvins. Uh, these two white sheets are acrylic sheets, they're quite reflective, uh, so it kind of helps. I like this reflective look, but obviously you can apply non-reflective surface as well, a piece of cloth or something, if that suits you better. So let's see uh, what results we got from it. Okay, so if you understand an RGB parade, you can see that the color balance is almost perfect and my camera it was set to automatic white balance. The object itself, uh, as far as I can see, is nicely evenly lit. Uh, I think this light is perfect for this type of objects and maybe even bigger ones. Now, this one is a tricky one because we've got uh, kind of white shoes, white beige, but almost white on the white background. And I think um, the light is managing really well. Now here, obviously, we have a bit of a reflection but that is not a big deal and with a bit of a um, diffuser it could be uh, removed. Uh, also, uh, it's just setting things differently. Uh, for me it was like a really quick setup. I, as you can see I just put two acrylic sheets together and it still worked very well. So let's have a look how it works with a darker product. So, uh, I often take photos uh, of uh, black products like this one. It's a night vision device. Now, I, all the videos that you see here are actually already corrected a bit. So I made them brighter, I added contrast and white. So uh, what you can see, uh, the light is reflecting off uh, the acrylic sheet. So you can see the reflections, but it looks really actually cute. So depending on the product and what kind of effects you want to achieve, that might be a good thing actually. And if not, you can also uh, always use some diffusers, which you will see in a moment uh, how it works. So as I said, 100%, 5,500 Kelvins, and my camera was set to automatic white balance. So uh, obviously I should set it to manual white balance. That's always the best thing to do with this type of photos and videos. Uh, but anyway, my camera handled it really, really nicely. Yeah. So let's have a look now at the video with the uh, diffuser. So you can see the light is probably a little bit more even. Uh, so the object is, it, is lit more evenly. Um, does it make uh, much of a difference? Well, I guess that depends what you want to achieve. I think it looks really pleasant, but even without diffuser, I really liked the results. And in a moment, I'll show you actually pictures as well, what they looked like uh, before and after correction. So I think this product, as far as I'm concerned, is brilliant for this type of photos and videos. And if you want to do this professionally, obviously you need to have a professional setup. This is not for professionals. Uh, Basically, this is for amateurs or half professionals. Okay, so this is my setup for product videos and photos. So uh, here's an example, it's already corrected. Uh, now this is an example of the picture, not yet corrected. So you can see the reflection of the light, even though there is a diffuser on it, um, there is still a bit of reflection. Uh, to remind you, I'm using an acrylic sheet that's very reflective. That's one. And two, I can always uh, brighten it up and make it disappear if I want to. And then if you have a program like Photoshop, you can cut it out. Or here in Capture One, you can actually make this bit uh, edit it separately by using a mask. So it's really great. Another example is this one. Uh, yeah, I can make those areas brighter. And um, here is a bottle that I have already uh, worked on and you can see I applied, um, you might not see it, but I applied the mask actually on the bottle and I uh, made it look really good. So as you can see the light distribution is really great. This picture is actually a little bit overexposed so if I wanted to cut it out I would take it to Photoshop and then would cut it out. Um, let's see some other examples here. This one has been worked on again a little bit overexposed but that was a quick job. Um, uh, okay. You can see yeah, the product is nicely lit. 
so I can place the product uh, further or closer so the light is in a different position and that gives us different um, effects obviously. Uh, here the light is at an angle, you can see it in the reflection. I am generally very pleased with the results because I was able to get lovely uh, product photos with just uh, one light. Normally I use two, three or four sources of light with this one. I only need one source of light and that's brilliant. That's absolutely priceless. So those wide beige shoes, very tricky conditions, but still I think the light handled it very well. So, um, you know, it all depends on the setup you have, how you place your products, what background you have. With white things you can always use a non-reflective background or a different color background. For example, you can use black background. So everything here can be obviously corrected. So I'm really happy with the results I got. Uh, so this is a little bit overexposed or cor I think may possibly uh, corrected by me. Uh, so really please, let's have a look now at the photos of some uh, dark products. Okay, so this is my uh, Black Knight Vision devices. So again, I corrected some of those photos and I think they look really really well, well lit from each side, very easy to cut out. If I need to cut them out in Photoshop or some other program, it's going to be very easy, uh, well lit all around. It's brilliant. Have a look. It's just absolutely brilliant. Uh, let's see some other examples. This is on the side, okay. Yeah, I think this is this looks really good. You can see how nicely evenly it is lit and again uh, You might see those reflections again. I can just uh, Make it brighter and they will disappear. So it's not really an issue Okie dokie. So again uh, those lights they actually look quite cute So they may be actually a nice thing depending on the effect you want to have with some objects I can see this being actually a nice bonus, you know, but again one click and they disappear Yeah, look at the detail here, you know how nicely it is lit evenly and everything can be clearly seen uh, it looks really good. I'm really pleased. So it's a black object that the tricky to photograph Nevertheless, I was able to capture fairly good picture now. Okay, here we are starting the photos with the diffuser on. Uh, so as you can see, the light is not as harsh and again, much easier to remove if you want to. The objects are even more evenly lit. I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautifully lit, very clearly, cleanly, uh, great product photography. So I absolutely love this light for semi-professional uh, use. I highly recommend that light.